Wow. I didn't warn these ones I was going to talk to them, but Connie had such a tremendous testimony. Uh, I think before I make comments, I'll let you make yours. Okay? Where are you from? Tell us where you're from. Sag was it Sag Texas. Texas. All the way from Texas. Wow. <laughs> this is awesome. Awesome, awesome. Yes, Jesus. At the beginning of the week, I went through some ministry, which, 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 which God did something to me. He, he, he. Mm, whoa. Early in the week, God did something to me. He, 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 oh, he, he ripped out my heart, ripped out my heart, ripped it, ripped it, ripped it right out and left me heartless, heartless. And I said, dear God, what is happening to me? And he said, he said, he said, he said, I've taken away your defenses because you don't have, you don't have, you don't have the same pride issue, the same issue of control anymore. I've taken good. it away, I've taken it away. And, and what he took me to, I've walked in control for 35 years. And he took me to a nine or a 10 year old child, the child that remembers being abused by an alcoholic father. And I came to a place that was ministering by drunks. And I'm supposed to receive, I'm supposed to receive. He took out my heart, my control, my defense and said, now receive from a drunk, a drunk. And I said, God, you made me long for Toronto for three years, three years. When I came, I came for this. This is what I came for, to hurt and be broken and to have my heart ripped out and be bleeding and empty. And I came, I came for two days and nights, two days and nights with no heart. No feelings, no feelings. I couldn't feel God. And I said, God, it's got to be you. It's got to be you because if you don't do it, if you don't do it, then I can't do it because I'm afraid. I'm a little girl who can't take care of herself because I don't have control anymore. And God, touched me last night. You don't know, you don't know, you don't know how hard it was to come up here last night. Ooh, to come up here last night when you're empty, when you're lost, when you're afraid, you're a little girl and you don't have control. But I knew, my mind said, if I just come, come and let the Lord do it, don't try to figure it out, let the Lord do it that I would feel again, that I, that I would know him and feel him. And, and so God touched me last night. When John touched me last night, it was like, it was like I had a transplant. It was a transplant. God gave me a new heart and I could love that man down there that I hated when I came here because God used it. And now I want another dream! 
I hope you caught that. In the midst of all the emotion, she said I was, as a young girl, I was abused by a drunken alcoholic father. I came up here desperately seeking God to find that I'm in the midst of a bunch of drunken Christians. And it all just flashed back on her and just, she was losing it big time and looking at guys like John Scotland and saying, where in the world have I come? You know, I, I need God. And, and, and just all that numbness and all that pain and everything. And God met her last night and taught her what the new wine is all about. The new wine of the Spirit. Oh, Jesus. It's worth it for you, honey. It's worth it for you. Fill her up with your joy and your great oh, and what? awesome gonna, and Can mighty you imagine love. what it's going to be like when she goes home with a healed heart? My first love is amazing fire. Feel his powerful love in me. He is keeping on the flame of passion. Now I let it grow in me. In the night I will see you. Seek your face, my love, my love Like a child I will dance in your presence Let the joy of heaven pour down on me Still remember the first day I met you I don't ever want to lose that fire Like a child I will dance in your presence Let the joy of heaven pour down on me Still remember the first day I met you
Let's welcome John Scotland. John, come and do what you do. Play your air guitar. But John and Carol had a barrel in the marketplace. Whoa! Whoa! For those of you that don't know, this is my air guitar. Whoa. I'm going to ask Jean if, if you'll come up, please, and just... Jean, my wife. <laughs> just share. Um, it's funny seeing John uh, this way. Um, to me, just it thrills me to see him so childlike. Um, I think with John's background, he's the second to oldest of 12 children. And uh, he'll be 50 next year. So you can sort of see the way, the childlikeness which the, uh, the Lord has put upon him. I just, it just thrills me to see it. And I just, um, I, I don't know, I just can't get over the way the Lord does things completely opposite. Well, com <laughs> so. Preach it, sister! <laughs> The Lord keeps saying, I can't get away from this, but the Lord just keeps saying over this next move that is coming, the next wave that is coming, it's going to be in ways which we're not even thinking of. We can't even conceive in our minds. The church in the present state is not going to be recognizable. Um, God is going to be doing such different things. And God has kept hidden for so long people which has been in the background, people which have been in the desert place, and he's been doing things which nobody knows in secret. And God has been preparing these people to come forth for such a time as this. And what is happening is these people, 
They've been so rejected even by the church. And they've gone through that many things. But God has humbled them because people will know that it's God. And these people are gonna be so sensitive to what God's doing because it's the heart of God going out to those people outside who have never seen God, but are crying out to him and want to see. And if they don't see it in the church, and what God is saying is, his heart's breaking for those cries as he hears going up from the prostitutes, from the one parent families, the people that are crying out for reality. And this is the, the heart of God. So these people which is kept hidden, God is gonna bring forth and he's gonna place upon them a mantle. And that mantle is gonna be, it's gonna be, the power is in the weakness. It's not coming for a strength, it's weakness. That's where the God's strength is. And the church for so long has looked at the world's ways. They put in things the world's ways and God is saying I'm sick to death of this and I want my church back and what he's saying is my heart has got to be seen my heart's breaking for those that cannot cannot come into the church in the present state you won't recognize the church because God's going to be meeting them outside in the pubs in the clubs and they're going to be talking about God and they're going to be but you won't recognize this you just won't recognize this because going to, God's just going to be doing this and this party which we which we oh this party which has only just started it's only just begun it's true it's only just begun and this party is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger because the people outside know how to party. The church doesn't seem to party because they've been kept back, restricted. And God wants to, that river to flow and flow and flow. So when these people on the streets, you see them coming down and they're going to be convicted, God's going to be doing it. He's going to have people in these certain places these people, and it's going to be those people which the church have rejected because they don't fit in. And these are the ones that God's heart's going out to. The church is not going to be recognizable. Sorry. Years ago, we used to do, um, we used to take parcels to refugee camps. And when the Jews were coming out of Russia, we would send, we, we took a truck across, and what they requested was, bring in the tambourines and a wedding dress, because they wanted to party. And we're getting back to our roots, really, where the Jews know how to party and to how to celebrate. And God's bringing back to roots, basic roots, where the church started. <laughs> it's God's heart, John. It's God's heart, Jean. It's his party. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to read from, from Luke chapter 1. Some of you think that I don't give readings. Well, I was brought up in the Baptist church. Hey, isn't this pulpit good? <laughs> I, you know, I, I, woo! 
I've been going through different stages of drunkenness. And the stage I'm at at the moment is slouching. I've gone through the hiccup stage. I've gone through the phase of heckling the preachers. I got a kiss off George today. <laughs> I told him he needs to get a shave. <laughs> oh, okay, now, be before we take off, you know, before we go surfing, Let's get the reading done. <clears throat> Luke! Luke! <laughs> Chapter 2! I tell you what, let's look at chapter one. Mm. Mm. Settle down now, please, ladies and gentlemen. Luke chapter 1 and verse 5. I want to thank the brother who gave me this poster today of a kitten um, and it says, you know, the kitten's looking, they're all innocent and there's paw marks all over the floor it's had its paws in the paint and the kitten is saying, Honest Lord, I don't look for trouble. <laughs> That's a good thing! <laughs> we will get to the reading for those that like the reading. I just got to go with the flow. I've come to the conclusion that my gift is offending people. <laughs> what can you do? You know, I mean, I think Christians are too, too sensitive anyway, you know. Always whinging. But it's a gift. I, I don't even have to say anything. shot the sheriff and I shot the deputy 
teacher. <laughs> Whoa, the sheriff is legalism. And the deputy is religion. Mm. That's, that's good, isn't it? That's copyrighted now. All right, you, you can't copy it. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. No, I, I didn't. The problem was, when I came through the doors in November 94, and the Lord said to me, what do you want, John? I said, I want to get drunk. But I forgot to tell him for how long. Now, I don't mind being drunk. It's great. But I said to the Lord, Lord, I don't like looking drunk. You know, your eyes get bloodshot. And he said to me, John, you see, some of you think God doesn't talk like that, but he's very, he's a fun God. Let's get the fun back into church. And he said, John, you see the rock stars? when they're on the TV the next morning being interviewed on breakfast TV, do you notice they always wear sunglasses? So he said, get yourself a pair of sunglasses. <laughs> I call these glasses glory shades. No. I'm sure Moses would have wore them if they had sunglasses in the Old Testament. Ooh. Now, hang in please. Hang in. Fasten your seatbelt. We may have a bit of turbulence tonight. <laughs> and you may want to run, but hang on in. Let's go back to the reading. Luke chapter 1. Verse, verse, verse. Oh dear. <laughs> Luke chapter one. For those of you having difficulty with that manifestation, like myself, that's a wake-up call.
Verse 5, my story begins with a Jewish priest, Zacharias, who lived when Herod was king of Judea. Zacharias was a member of the Abbey division of the Temple Service Corps. His wife Elizabeth was like himself, well not quite, a member of the priest of the priest tribe of the Jews, a descendant of Aaron. Zacharias and Elizabeth were godly folk. Careful to obey all of God's laws in spirit as well as in letter. But oh, but they had no children. For a <laughs> they had no children, for Elizabeth was barren, and now they were both very old. One day as Zacharias was going about his work in the temple, <laughs> for his division was on duty that week. The honor fell to him by lot to enter the inner sanctuary and burn incense before the Lord. Meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, a great crowd stood outside in the temple court. Notice this, please, ladies and gentlemen. If you're taking notes, <laughs> and those of you that come in to check the place out, you've chosen the wrong night. While a great crowd stood outside in the temple court, verse 10, praying, praying, praying. As they always did, during that part of the service when the incense was being burned. Zacharias was in the sanctuary when suddenly An angel appeared standing to the right of the altar of incense. Zacharias was startled and terrified. Isn't it funny how we, isn't it funny how, 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 
how we think that because God comes that we should all be, you know, not afraid. Zacharias was terrified. But the angel said, don't be afraid, Zacharias. For I have come to tell you that God has heard your prayer. Whoa. Whoa. God hears prayer. God has heard your prayer and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you are to name him John. You will both have great... It's hard work taking the reading. <laughs> you will both, verse 14, now settle down, ladies and gentlemen, settle down. You will both have great joy and gladness at his birth and many will rejoice with you for he will be one of the Lord's great men. Isn't it great to shout in church? No, oh, it is, isn't it? It's great, it's, it's, you know, all these years, you know, we've been told when you walk into church, shh, shh, you might wake God up. Ladies and gentlemen, the angels are serving wine. They're serving wine as I speak. They're bringing, bringing big barrels. (laughs) 
the party's only just begun. <laughs> Two years ago, Two years ago, a family, well, the couple were living together, and their daughter died of cancer at 23, I think she was. But six months before she died, They came to me and said, John, can we use the church hall to throw a party for it? What was I to do? I said, yes. Now, I was faced with the dilemma they were an ungodly family and they were having a party and along with the party they wanted drink. And the Lord said, go along, let them, let them drink. And they invited me to the party and Jean. And it was about 1 a.m. And the party had only just begun. And the disco was playing. And they had this machine that puffed out smoke and flashing lights. And I sat there in the party. And the place was heaving. And you know what the Lord said to me? He said, John... This is how you party. <clears throat> this is how you party. I'd been to church for 20 odd years, people looking at their watch, wondering when the preacher's going to finish. Hoping the meeting would finish by quarter to eight. Church, we're only just learning how to party. You know, we were never invited to parties when we were Christians, and the reason we weren't invited was because we were joy killers. Yeah. 
Yeah. Joy killers. Now I get invited all the time. My brother, Orbit. <laughs> Clearly Canadian. Strawberry fields forever. And you like this one. Canadian wild. <laughs> Jesus said, I've come to give you life. Life! Life! And that more abundantly. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, fasten your seat belts, please. We are about to take off into orbit to go where no man's gone before, to galaxies unknown. For those of you that weren't here earlier in the week, I'm multimedia. I am a sign and a wonder. got news for you, there's television. You've been listening to radio for too long. That's gone over your heads, hasn't it? Too deep. Open that, that. Come on, George. Come on, George, you can do it. <laughs> oh, it's open. The top on the orbit bottle says, defies gravity.
Some of you are uncomfortable. You've treated, you've treated, you've treated the lost with surgical gloves. You've kept them at a distance. You've come with your pride and you think that you're the only ones that God listens to. You say, how do I know? I've never touched drink, I mean the real drink in the world, I've never touched it. I used to hate it, couldn't stand the smell of it. The city where I come from in Liverpool has a pub on every corner. When a, prophet, when a prophet told me that there was an anointing for me coming pre-94, I thought, great. But when that anointing came, it came in a package I didn't expect. It came in a package of offense. People say, I want what you've got. And I think, why would you want what I've got? And you maybe see the joy and the freedom, but there's a price. There's a price. There's a price. Mm. How would you like to be a drunk in a teetotal society? You go to a conference, Spirit of God comes on you, you're drunk. And what's more, you look drunk, you sense it, 
your senses are all heightened, your hearing, you can hear clearly, you see things. Do you know what I saw? I saw a church that wasn't ready for the lost. Come Holy Spirit. Save the lost. But we want them sanitized. We want them cleaned up before they come in and God is saying, no, I'm taking them as they are, out of the gutter. I've seen people with black Bibles. I'm in a meeting and I'm stumbling. My eyes are bloodshot. And they look. And it's a look of distaste and disgust. You know the wonderful thing is that God loves us. God loves us as we are, as we are, as we are. He loved us while we were yet sinners. He loves sinners. is drifting away when I was in Norway I had a vision and it was in a harbor It was one of those parable visions. It was actually something which I'd seen in the afternoon. They'd had a big tent and they were having a 60s revival day. And on the Sunday afternoon, we'd been at the church on the Saturday night. They'd had a service called Blow Up the Church. Started at 11.30 p p.m. Went on till 2.33 a.m. People drunk in the spirit. Bishop's daughter crawling on all fours in the street. And the following day I went down to the harbor and there was the 60s group waiting for the bus to come and take them home. And there was the guy that was taking down the tent and I had a chat with him. And in the harbor there was a man that was washing his boat. And that night I had 
trouble with my stomach. I vomited three times and I was awake all night and God spoke to me. God said, as you're vomiting, John, that's how I feel about the lukewarm church. And then I had the vision of the boat and they were, the crew were on board and they were cleaning the boat and polishing it. And in the harbor there were people that were drowning. But the crew were more concerned with polishing the boat. And making sure that the life rafts were polished and the cries of the lost were going unheard. I'm sorry, my heart's aching. My heart's aching. For some of you resist the Spirit of God tonight. All we need is love. All we need is love. Doesn't that show what a religious spirit does when they cut off funding for children? My job's to blow up the church. In this same meeting, as I was preaching, I had a vision and I was strapped with dynamite. See, some of you are saying, I can't get my head around this. You're not supposed to get your head around it. You're supposed to get your heart around it. You've got PhD. Permanent head damage. <laughs> Listening to too many sermons and not working them out. You want to taste sermons when God wants to take you as you are and use you. Bring in the last. <clears throat> Hang on, we're landing. I never asked for this. I never asked for it. But all I know is it works. Twenty years I've preached three point sermons. Nobody set free. Now I get drunk and ramble and God offends people to reveal their hearts. I was at another service and I, I had my bag with the bottles in and I staggered to the front And I'm going through the bag looking for my bottles and 
and I know the Spirit of God is doing something. And my natural mind is saying, get on with the sermon. And the Spirit of God is saying to me, carry on, go with the flow. The next night a lady calls me and she said, I was offended. I was offended with you. When you took that bag and put it in the middle of the room and began to look through it, all the memories of when I was a child and my mother was an alcoholic, all the memories and all the pain came flooding back. And I don't know whether I can sit in the meeting tonight. I said, try your best. This church had an orchestra. And the band began to play. And the lady began to cry. And I said to the band leader, play on. And the band played on. A few days later, we got a letter from her to say that God had healed her. Now what do you want? Do you want religion? What do you want? Do you want just want sermons? Tickle your ears? Or do you want the foolishness? Do you want the foolishness of the Holy Spirit to come in? In power? and see people set free. We had a conference called Not Just Another Drink. Not Just Another Drink. And we had a Malaysian speaker And I get to the pulpit to introduce the Malaysian speaker. I'm drunk as a skunk. And I hear the Holy Spirit clearly say, John, I don't want the Malaysian speaker to speak. Whoa. And I'm standing there. And inside I'm arguing with the Lord. Lord, you know that this isn't our English culture to invite a guest speaker and not let the speaker speak. It goes against all that we've been taught is good manners. And the Lord said, I don't want the Malaysian speaker to speak. It's my church. I can do what I want. I want to heal people. And so I took my bartender's jacket off and put on my doctor's coat. How would you like to be operated on by a drunk surgeon? <laughs> a 
And I said, the bar's closed, but the doctor's surgery is open. Who wants to get healed? And a lady came out with two abscesses in her ears. One in each. And I staggered up to her and stuck both fingers in her ears. How many of you know that you don't stick fingers in people's ears with abscesses? She was instantly healed. The next patient came. And she was 26 years of age. And she could no longer walk long distances because her feet, her legs were growing apart. She had to wear wedges in her shoes. I said, take your shoes off. And she had holes in her socks. And she was embarrassed. The ladies prayed for her and one leg straightened and she walked like this. And so we prayed for the other leg and that straightened. Her boyfriend was a surgeon and knew the impossibility of it. And I got a letter a month later to say she's now walking and cycling and doing things she couldn't do before. In the same surgery, there was a lady who had club feet. She came out for back trouble. In other words, she didn't have faith for her feet to be healed, but she had a little bit of a niggling back trouble, and so she thought, I'll have prayer for the back trouble. But we did a medical check on her and asked her to take her shoes off and found that she had club feet. So we sat her in the chair and I got her husband to hold her ankles and we spoke to her feet. How many of you know that when you're drunk you can do anything? <laughs> you can, you can fly, you can surf. So I looked at her feet and I said, feet, straighten out. And her both legs did a 45 degree swivel. <laughs> so that built our faith. So we said, all right, stand on your feet. And one foot began to grow. And she came back the next morning with one foot bigger than the other. I could see the headlines. Preacher prays for woman with club feet and now she has to buy two pair of shoes. (laughs) 
She said, maybe the Lord wants me to be a sign. One foot bigger than the other. I said, I don't think so. I don't think the Lord wants you buying two pair of shoes, one size bigger than the other. Isn't it funny how we spiritualize things, you know what I mean? We can't quite believe that God wants to bless us. So now our faith was high. We didn't pray for her in the back room, you know. You We brought her out in front of everybody and everybody's looking at her other foot. <laughs> foot! Grow! And he... he Hello, Rob. Have a drink. Go on, have a drink. Go on, have one. Go on, Rob. I'll go on. I'll go on. Go on. I'll go on. Uh, have a drink. We release, we release healing. Who? Healing. Yes, Lord. Deliverance through the music. Whoa. Whoa. As you play.